tell me about like this LEED certification. What, what what's the big deal about that? And what is it? Uh, LEED, LEED certification is uh, a designation given by the uh, Green Building Council in Washington D.C. But it's uh, leadership and energy and environmental design, uh -huh. and uh, it's basically encouragement to to build um, with uh, the energy and the environment uh, in mind uh, as the construction is planned and as it's constructed and and then how it operates after it's um, in production. Okay, so what's the big deal, you know, about doing that? I mean, how does that affect the wine and, uh, you know, what's the, what, I'm playing a little devil. devil yeah, there. I mean, what's the big deal? I, I think the big deal, you know, to, to anyone is, is, is the question is why not? Um, because Energy is, uh, you only have so much energy that you can generate. Um, and when you can build a building that uh, doesn't use as much energy and is insulated well enough, uh, and in our case, that you can produce energy, <laughs> uh -huh. um, it not only, you know, we become a manufacturer of energy. Um, and if we can, you know, use less that is generated through hydro, through coal, um, and in the future nuclear. Um, the more that, the less you'll have to build of those. And um, so I think it's it's a little bit of self-sustaining, uh, self-sustaining, not not as much as uh, just sustainable. But you know, you can exist more easily on your own and not depend on outside. Influences or forces to to make to to keep your uh, operation going. Yeah, uh, but you know it's efficient. Um, it's uh, a return. Uh, saves money. Saves energy. Uh, so it's cost effective in terms of like the long run because like up yeah. front there's a little more cost involved, like you know the solar right. panels and things. Right. I mean there there's there is an upfront cost to it and. But the, the return that you get um, is, is becoming less and less through energy tax credits, through grants that you get, um, and, and the more efficient solar panels that, as they become um, developed or modernized or, or created uh, more efficient. Um, and you know, we probably, you know, two thirds of the year, almost two thirds of the year, are pretty energy self sufficient fantastic. in this building. Uh huh. Fantastic. So, in other words, you're not um, utilizing power from any other source, like you know, yeah. PGE does not. Oh sure. Um, well, we are connected, obviously, to right. PGE, right? Um, because it's not an even energy flow. You know, ours just happens during the day, yeah. <laughs> and then at night you don't generate any uh, solar energy. Um, so, but when you lump, you know, the higher peak periods during the day versus the the non-production periods at night, but those are also when you use energy and you don't use energy. Right. So, yeah. you know, you, 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 it balances out. And, you know, just for us, our thinking uh, purposes is Oregon never had a, a very friendly net metering law, which means that if you overproduce in a day, you you don't you don't get credit for what you overproduce. Oh, you can't put it back into the system. You it goes back into the system. Oh, it does. But the generator doesn't get credit for it. Oh, is that right? But that's being changed as of October 24th. Wow, I always assumed that that was the case, that you'd get credit for that. Yeah. I think everybody does. Wow! But, but it's changing. It's changing. They're going to, instead of averaging it out over a day, they're going to average it out over a year. Yeah. But, again, what's happened, yeah. what's happened is utilities don't want competition. <laughs> yeah. And so, we are, are, facility is over a 25 kil uh, kilowatt system. Okay. 
and you can't have more than 25 kilowatt system uh, and get credit for overproduction. We have a 40, 46 megawatt system, not megawatt, but kilowatt system, uh -huh. um, that is more than what they allow. <laughs> huh, that's interesting. So there were, there's, there were rules in terms of what you, you know, what you could get credit for, could not get credit for, but since ours was higher, we didn't get credit. And so the original law, it sounds like then it was aimed at the individual homeowner rather than an it, industrial it, it situation. Is. It is. A commercial building. Yeah. And, uh, so, um, so again, we're beyond that and, and it'll, uh, it'll help us. So, can you list all the things that are in this building that are part of the, the LEED certification? Um, yeah. You know, the other thing is I can get you to is just so, uh, what do we do with those? Oh, I've got Well, th this is this is for demonstration purposes, and we need to get a, a better way of uh, doing this. And, and I, I'm thinking we just have to get a kiosk of some kind that that will put this on it. But uh, but this is these are the, the various ways in which they see it's a point system, okay. and you accumulate certain points to get to lead certified. And then they have a bronze level, a silver level, um, and a gold level, and a platinum level. And uh, it's all done by the amount of points that you achieve through the various measurements that they give you. One of them is, is, is recycling of 95% or 90% or 80% of the material that you use in construction. Here. Uh huh. So recycling of the material that is no it, that was not used. So that includes like wood. It includes um, anything. Anything here. This Those are all recycled. Styrofoam. Out there? Well, but that's different. Um, but again, the construction material, the recycling of it is a big thing. Okay. Uh, using recycled material. And in our case, we have these beams on our porches, our harvest porch there, and other areas. Uh, those are recycled uh, beams that we, we had milled here on the property. Recycled from? An old uh, warehouse in Northwest Port. Uh -huh. And we had purchased that and, and, and now, uh, and then we used it here. Yeah. Um, uh, you know, nice beams. <laughs> making it, um, friendly for bicyclists to come here is another huh, one of those. And so we have a bike rack for people who want to come and you know bike here and, and put their bikes in. and so then your your insulation um, in the in the building in the walls and in the ceiling that yeah I, I was, I'm trying to keep to the site oh, oh, okay, and, sorry. And, and so forth but um, uh, so the site here is the landscape uh, is where it doesn't take excessive water, and after two years, it takes no water to do our landscape. Hmm. And uh, uh, from a, uh, a water standpoint, uh, we collect the rainwater off the, the roof, and we have it go into this pond right over here, and that's what the fire department would use if we ever had a fire here. Uh -huh. And you have to have about 25,000 gallons available on a commercial building in the country that doesn't have fire, fire hydrants. So we could have put an underground reservoir in or an above ground reservoir. We just decided to build a pond. Yeah. And so that was an attractive feature. And that was, so we collect the rainwater and it goes in there. And that is an innovative point that you get from the lead for weed certification. So how does the pond, like, you know, during the dry time, is like you have a lot We of have a layer, we have a, um, a plastic liner mm -hmm. for what we definitely have to have available for the fire department. Yeah, but you get, during the summer you get a lot of evaporation of things, I mean, 
What you see is what you get. Is that right? So yeah, good for you. I mean, it didn't it didn't evaporate that much. Oh. I was so I was very surprised this year. Yeah. Um, light is another big thing inside of our building. As you can see, we have no lights here because uh, it's all natural light. Uh -huh. Now we do have lights in here, but sure. we don't turn them on because we don't need them. Unless it's dead winter and you need um, it's right. really dark. And we have skylights in, in many cases in our, in our fermentation room, we, in our tasting room here, in our offices. We have basically all windows on the north side. Uh -huh. And so you don't get the heat coming in from the sun, um, but you do get all the light, the natural light that comes in. Yeah. So lots of skylights, lots of lights on the north, or uh, windows on the north. Huh. So that, that's the, the other major thing. Um, uh, in terms of, of insulation, you know, we, we do have a lot of concrete that is about 11 inches thick. So we have, for, we have tr for insulation purposes. And that insulates or does that store? Well, it's mostly, that's a barrier from, it basically keeps it rather uh, to even temperature. Okay. And our cellar, for instance, we don't have any, um, any heating or air conditioning or humidifier in our, in our cellar. Huh. We, um, we, we cut and dug the, into the dirt, and it's all underground. Uh -huh. And then we obviously uh, put the dirt back. And, um, and so it keeps its own natural temperature. Yeah. Um, and it has some humidity, but we simply... Uh, when we wash barrels, and we usually do it on a daily basis, and the floor, that is an automatic humidifier. Oh, that's interesting. In the, in the, yeah. so. the other thing that we, we have is between the fermentation floor and the cellar ceiling, we have about seven, eight feet of, of space. And uh -huh. what we decided to do is to build a tunnel system that would make it easier to get our uh, electrical and our plumbing in. But we draw. We can draw outside air at night hmm. to go into the cellar if it falls, up, if it goes above 58 degrees. Okay. And if it's less than 56 degrees outside, it will automatically bring in that cool air to keep it uh, keep the cellar at 57. So it's kind of like a crawl space. It's big enough to to do. It's called a catacomb. Yeah, tunnel system, catacomb. Catacomb, I like that word. Um, but again, we have a fan that will draw uh -huh. outside air in through this tunnel system and it drops it directly into the cell. What a good idea. So again, that's part of the, the energy performance, the ventilation, the cooling that we have here. Uh -huh. um, uh, everything that we've, we have is, is quality material. Uh, because part of, to me, sustainability is how long will this building last? Mm -hmm. And this, you know, the, the building will last for a very, very long time. Yeah. Uh, and that was what our design was as well, is, is uh, to, to build quality material. And see, here, here you can see right here is our barrel room, and then here is our catacombs and cooling mass. Uh, but it's also, you know, it's also insulation from the top here to the bottom there, mm -hmm. uh, and so you, you know, anytime you have dead space, uh, it keep, it'll keep that lower portion cooler. That's so, interesting. This is also a gravity-fed winery, mm -hmm. which we have three levels, and the reason for that is so you you don't have to do as much pumping, and you don't have to use as a forklift as much. And so your thought was to use that, um, for some people it's like, it's gentler on the... It's, it's gentler on the wine, but it's also more energy efficient. Yeah, huh, that's so, interesting. So you've got more of a natural flow instead of an electrical, uh, man-made uh, flow to the wine. Yeah. Uh, uh, in the process of getting from one point to the next. Yeah. So that's, that's uh, really what we have here. And then you can see all the skylights that we have on the north side of the fermentation room. Um, and then this is going to be show you the solar. We have 244 solar panels, just like the one that we, we have on display inside here. Um, and you know, 
they generate, you know, on a on a good day around 300 kilowatt per hour. Huh. Um, in total, it provides about 50 percent of our estimated annual electrical requirements. Um, and like financially, like how long does it take to recoup? It's um, ours is we figured ours was about 10 to 12 years. 10 to 12 years. Um, yeah. And uh, over 20 years, I guess the the photovoltaic um, um, units are supposed to only lose about 20 percent efficiency because they just just from age, uh -huh. you know, yeah. they lose some of the you know efficiency. But I expect, you know, within 10, 15 years, they'll probably have more efficient, and so it's like. You know, when interest rates go down, it's cheaper to refinance your home and you're going to save, you know, money yeah. by reinvesting into cheaper money. And that, I think that's the same thing that's going to happen. Yeah. Here. It's going to be cheaper to, to replace them in X amount of years. So production will go down 20% in a period of time, but I think efficiency will go up 50%. So we'll have a 70% difference and, and you'll get your money back in three years or yeah. five years or whatever the time. I'm amazed at how long it's like I do a lot of work in Africa in really remote areas and I so I use a lot of solar panels to charge you know my cameras mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff and this latest um, I just went in March and February it's phenomenal how fast and efficient these my solar panels are little panels are about that big I was just flabbergasted at how well those things yes, charge yes, oh my gosh. We, we actually put a uh, Solar radiation unit uh, up at our house for our swimming pool uh -huh. this year. Uh -huh. So that's sort uh, of up, similar. Uh, up on your roof then? Or no, no, no it's, in the, it's in the back. Uh -huh. It's on the you know it's it's on posts. Uh -huh. So it's on, on you know just you can't really see it from the house. You can't see it from the house at all. Oh, fantastic! Yeah. So, and then this one is energy performance um, from a building standpoint, and and these you know this you know, if you read the the material it. They, it goes into a lot of some of what I've already said, but uh, and I can actually forward that to you if you wanted it. If you wouldn't mind, I'd really appreciate that. I can forward all these to you. Yeah, oh, that'd be great. Yeah. So when you low flow plumbing fixtures, uh, our toilets are are half flush. Uh huh. You know, it's the Australian one, so you can push it. You need to use the toilets before you go. Natural ventilation, nighttime cooling, thermal mass, gravity flow, uh, efficient lighting and controls in daylight, uh, energy, energy savings, uh, uh, on-site generation of power. Okay, but that gives you a lot of a lot of the. Uh, this is kind of interesting too. The Fifty lead certified buildings on the West Coast. We were. Number six. In terms of like the number of points? No, I think what they did is, uh, well, yeah, in essence, I think they did it by gold level. You can see all the platinums were first and all the uh -huh. golds were next. So they did rate them by, by that. But I think that there was another um, uh, square feet. I don't know if that has anything to do with it. But I think it probably is by points. So now, how many wineries? Uh, in the United States, um, you know, are gold certified? Uh, we are the only lead certified winery in the country. Fantastic. We were the second in the world because there's one in Canada that was lead certified a year or two before us huh. as a winery. Uh -huh. Now there are two other um, lead certified portions of wineries, and one is a barrel room Just by Soka Blossom, uh -huh. and the other is a tasting room in Napa, or huh. Sonoma. Uh, so those are the only other lead, at this point, that I'm aware of. Yeah. Um, so what was the motivation? I mean, you woke up one morning and just said, well, I want to be, you know, energy efficient, or what, what you know, what brought you to this point? Is that, well, um, a lot of people talk about it, but don't act on it. 
my whole life I have been uh, intrigued with efficiency, uh-huh. with solar, uh, with generating your own power. Uh-huh. And it's, it's a little bit, uh, like I started out with, more self-sustaining. Not sustainable, uh-huh. but I will, I've always liked being self-sustaining. And, and so I'm trying to picture what that means. I mean, you know, it's like in other words, I don't have to depend on outside forces uh-huh, okay. for me to control my life. Yeah, so to speak. Uh-huh. And and if you can do it naturally, or you can do it um, in uh, in a less cost fashion, you know, why uh-huh. not? So now, where does that come from? I mean, you know, from the Boy Scouts or something? Traits, or? Personal. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, I don't know. It's just what I was born. Well, yeah, I grew up on a farm. Uh-huh. And you know what? Did, what did farmers do? They they grew their own meat. They grew their own vegetables. They they fixed they, their own. Equipment. They fixed their own equipment. They did everything themselves. Yeah. And that's where that mentality came from. That's yeah. just what we did. And I just you know even though when I was growing up, you outsourced a lot of those things. Um, you know, as the ages time passes, but you know it all it always stuck with me. Um, yeah. To, to do that, um, but. Uh, I, I've always just been infatuated with producing solar power, huh. and, and uh, I wanted to do it on our house, but it just didn't fit. Didn't fit in terms of uh, mostly aesthetics, uh-huh. mostly uh, putting what, the panels up on what, the roof. Yeah. What we wanted, yeah. Um, yeah. and uh, so we, uh, I said, we're going to do this with solar power, uh-huh. no matter what. Yeah. yeah. And that is actually what led to the potential lead certification. I had never heard of lead certification in 2002 or 2003 when we started our project. Uh-huh. And, but our architects had, and they, they said, would you be interested in, in lead certification? And I said, well, I don't know what it is. And so yeah. they, did, they did, and they had not done anything lead cert- certified either. Yeah. So, so it was sort of the blind leading the blind. And, so once we, we researched and looked into it, um, we decided that, that we'll go for it. Yeah. And, and it wasn't because it was, we just did it for ourselves. We didn't do it because nobody else had done it yet. We just did it because we wanted to. And it was more that, that mentality of growing up on a farm and just being wanting to be self-sufficient. Self-sufficient. There you go. Self-sufficient might be a better term than uh-huh. self-sustaining. Yeah. But you're right. Self-sufficient is, is, is the right term. But the, the other major thing with this winery is um, this, this land was a farm before, mm-hmm. and it, the farm was kept intact. It wasn't a portion that was sold off to somebody so they could plant a vineyard uh-huh. and build a winery. You know, we bought 373 acres of a farm that my uncle and father had originally purchased, and so we wanted to keep the integrity of the farm in place and so we, we wanted a barn-like structure mm-hmm. with metal exterior just like the other buildings here yeah uh, and so we wanted it to be part of of the naturalness of a farm and what our landscape was at the time as opposed to building something that was different mm-hmm. and so this blends in much better so we wanted a barn-like building with a high-tech winery inside. Uh-huh. And it's interesting, people come up to the house, they'll pass this thinking the winery's up there. And they'll say, I'll say it's down there, that big silver building, and they'll say, I thought that was a barn. Oh, so it worked, so it the worked. aesthetics worked very, yeah. very well. And that's interesting that they think that your house is the winery. Because of the of preconceptions or, or structure. something. Yeah. Yeah. That's very interesting. So, Kathy, how does this all this fit into you? I mean, like you come from L.A., and um, you know, L.A. has a different mentality, obviously, than growing up on a farm. It's like, how, how does this all fit for you? Uh, actually, I think it's a good mix because you know you have learn survival skills in a big town like that. That's a different kind of survival skill, though. Yeah, uh, and than, than uh, and then when you get get it kind of mixed in the farming, um, I think it, it's a good mix. Uh-huh. Uh, not that everybody would do it, but yeah, uh, I I feel comfortable with it. I had to adjust to the farm life. 
I bet you did. But it's um, uh, it's good. It's just that the distance from here to Portland to, to Portland. Big Town, yeah, especially it's through Dundee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's exactly right. Yeah. So other than that, um, yeah, I feel very comfortable. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. So I'm kind of curious too. It's like you know how you decided to do vineyards and and then finally a winery. I mean, that's a... Uh, well, uh, from your background. Well, you know, I lived here before this was wine country. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, got interested in wine after, you know, I moved away. Um, and what was it that perked your interest about wine? I mean, just, just it, the drinking it or...? Well, studying it, basically. Uh -huh. and, and you know, tasting classes and so forth, and figuring out what we, what it was all about, and yeah. what the flavors were, and the, and the aromas, and, and whatnot. Um, but uh, you know, when there, there's there were two things. We were interested in having vineyard land prior to this family property coming up for sale. Uh -huh. um, and, you know, having grown up on a farm, you know, I always felt it would be nice to, to have more property, uh -huh. you know, in the country. Um, and so when the two occurred, uh, this land came available and, and we could buy it and combine uh, my, my background and my interests, my personal interests. I'm still, I'm still kind of curious, like, where that, the idea of the vineyard comes from. I mean, you yeah. could have planted, well, you know, uh, well, I, hazelnuts, sir. The, the idea was to, for us, was to buy 50 acres and have 25 in, in vineyards. Yeah, but, kind of a weekend home. Kind of a weekend home, but you know, it's like still, like, what was it, you know, like attracting about uh, well, like vineyards? I mean, it's like with the romance, or uh, you know, um, you went through Napa and said, oh, I like this, or. Actually, we used to go to Napa quite a bit. Oh, is that right? We did this, yeah. Well, what I've always said is that this, the soil, the topography of the farm, uh, the location was meant to be a vineyard. Uh huh. Period. And and I think being utilized in the other way, you know, was not using it to its best use. Yeah. And because it's it's got the right soil got the right slope, it's got the right exposure, um, and it's situated in the right elevations, uh, the right climate, and, and, you know, for what it was going to, to give, vineyards was, was the natural byproduct. Yeah. And wasn't it the oldest wine guys that uh, would always say this, you know, gosh, I wish you guys would Bill put grapes in there, put mines in there instead uh -huh. of having turkeys up there. Who used to say that? Uh, was it like Ponzi or? Well, e I think Cal Knutson was the one that really uh -huh. first, and then Dickie Rath certainly did. But everybody knew that this was a, a wine, this was a vine vineyard property. Yeah. And, uh, but, you know, if I wanted to get into some segment of the agricultural industry, you know, you just, you can easily deduct what are the, the what are the right things to put on here, what are the wrong things to put on here, and then you place those on a on a list. And you know, certainly the cost to build a vineyard is as much as it is as much as you can put into any land. But then you do it once in forty years or fifty years, and so it it's a little bit like putting on solar panels. You know, over time it pays for itself, and over uh -huh. time this will pay for itself. As if well. you made the right judgment in terms of like varietal rootstock, sure, you know, all those kinds yeah. of things. Which yeah. we, everything is planted on phylloxera resistant. Yeah. You, know, you know, some people are still planting on on yes. their own roots, yes, especially they are. especially on the on the valley floors. Um, you know, I don't know. Yeah, they'll get it. It'll happen. Yeah. It, but it was interesting how it came from a little weekend home to actually living out here. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Uh, and then um, we also had uh, 
we, we, we redid that little house down there when we first moved here. Uh, this one, the, 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 the closest house. one right yeah. here. Uh -huh. And we used that for the weekend home. We uh -huh. came out here and just the boys would run and play and, and we kind of dream. Uh, uh -huh. But it kind of mushroomed into then building the house and we were mainly going to sell the grapes to other wineries. Uh -huh. and just be, what's it called, a vineyard farmer? No, just a farmer. And then it led into, well, this build wine. Uh huh. So it's kind of took steps. Sure. And so, what was the, you know, when when did the light bulb go off for the winery? Well, um, you know, I think you know your own pride sort of gets in the way, and, and uh, gets in the way of of just selling your grapes. Oh, oh because other people, like other people, people are taking your like your efforts are. and making good wine, and you think, well. Why can't I make that? Yeah, so why can't you do it exactly? Yeah. So, so that probably was the thing, and, and you know, uh, I, I think in the end, uh, from an economical standpoint, you know, when you further process something, you're able to take advantage of that vertical market, and, and that's sort of what we wanted to, to do. Um, and then you know, you go from growing it to, to processing it, and making it, and then selling it. Uh -huh. And the more we can sell from here, the better off you are. Um, and, and so that's that's the goal of everybody. Yeah. Uh, but you know, you, you build, you produce enough, and it, it uh, you know, you, you make a, a name and a brand for yourself. Uh, and that's fun too. And it's also part of the business challenge. I would have to add to that is the business challenge of taking taking something from nothing and uh -huh. creating creating. A brand. Yeah, yeah. So, could you have done this, like the, this building, in Napa, or or would you have done it in Napa, or let's say in Fresno, uh, or Lodi, or uh, La Rioja, you know, uh, some other location? Um, you know, the architecture might be a little different. Mm -hmm. But uh, yes, I mean, from the standpoint of uh, lead certification to solar to to uh, energy efficiency to light to, to everything, sure. One of the, one of the, the reason why I ask that is one of the things I hear is that Oregon is like thinks a little bit differently than um, Californians do, and I, I'm originally from there, grew up in Napa. Uh, they. Uh, uh, like a little bit more environmentally oriented, thinking about it, not necessarily acting on it, but at least thinking about like the environment more than other uh, places. And that's different than say I probably shouldn't have said the La Rioja because like that's a whole different mentality there. Is that Chile? Uh, uh, no, Spain. Spain. Yeah. Real. Okay. Um. It's, it's interesting because most everyone who's come most everybody who's in the business, first generation, is from somewhere else. Uh -huh. And for the most part, none of them were farmers. Very, very true. And I think that most of the Oregonians, or most of the wine people in Oregon, probably have a little more of a uh, philosophical bent toward in, in the environment. Not, and that's just their personal feelings. And I have a feeling though, but I have a feeling that much of that's been fostered by um, being different than somewhere else. Um, like Oregon being different. Than Oregon somewhere. being different. Uh -huh. and, and you, you getting caught up in its own, you know, our own culture here, and uh, and so, you know, you can either join it or you don't join it. But most people have joined it, so it's easier to be conforming than because I think most of these people were nonconformists uh -huh. who came who came and did this, um, who really have a conforming personality. <laughs> oh, that's interesting. <laughs> Because <laughs> uh, most of them were nonconformists and didn't want to do what they did, and uh -huh. they wanted to do something totally different. 
and not many other people were doing it here. So, you know, they wanted to leave that life and come and, and lead a different, simpler, agrarian life. Yeah. And, and, and in some respects, maybe a lot of them were hippies, you know, had the hippie culture. Mm -hmm. And I won't name names, but I could probably go back and say that, you know, you know, um, maybe the majority of those that got into it were that. Uh -huh. uh, were caught up in the 60s and the 50s in, in that change of, of attitude, perhaps, in America. Um, and so I think, I think by all of, most of us, if not all of us, getting behind sustainability, uh, uh, you know, is really a conforming uh, attitude. Conforming to the Oregon attitude. Con conforming to uh, a different attitude. A different attitude. Yeah, I think Oregon likes to be different. Uh -huh. Oregon likes to be something counter to what others are. I mean, I think, you know, what do they call it, the contrarian uh -huh. viewpoint. I think Oregon, Oregonians are fairly contrary. It's um, like they used to say, you can come visit, but you can't stay. Yeah. Uh-huh. Um, so with that, I, I think it's you know it, it's a little bit of like anything, but you call it momentum. You know, I think there's just momentum that is surrounding what uh, Oregon and its attitude is and, and what it stands for. But you know, it's not just the people here; it's the people you know in in the metropolitan areas. You know, Oregon's always been uh, Eugene has always been that little different place in Oregon. Portland is relative, it's different, but, but Portland is building a, a lot of green buildings. Um, yeah, hospitals. And, and everybody is doing it today, and, and therefore, it seems like even students who come from out of state to students that are in state, you know, they all support, you know, a greener um, construction building method. You know, I, I'm on the board of Pacific University, and I'm an alum there as well. But all of our new buildings being built are, are LEED certified, and it's because that's what the population there desires. And, uh, you know, I don't know if that's Oregon, or I don't know if it's the, the younger generation, um, but it's a combination of it all. But Oregon has momentum, yeah. and momentum is LEED certification, is building green, is, is organic, is, 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 is really healthy. And I think it does come down to a healthy lifestyle. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And I think green is healthy. Um, and at least from my own perspective, I try to you know, keep myself physically fit, eat healthy food. Uh, and I think you know, it goes hand in hand with uh, conservation and, and, and uh, energy efficiency and environmental friendly practices. Yeah. What was the biggest obstacle that you had to overcome? Like in doing all this, it's like, you know, you've got the vineyard there, you've got like the winery now. Well, the biggest obstacle is choosing a site. <laughs> choosing a site for? For the, for the uh, uh, winery. For the winery. Yeah, and you know, the, uh, unfortunately we took some land that I didn't want to take. Because? Because it could be put in vineyards. Ah. Uh, um, and so I really have, you know, some, uh, obviously, remorse about having to do that, but to, to do it in a gravity fed, so it, you sort of took it from one to the other. This was the best site to, to save energy, to, to do the sorts of things that we wanted in a green building, in a less energy or, or greater energy efficient building. Um, so uh, so it's, it's, you sacrifice something to gain something else. So, so that was the biggest Obstacle, you know. The, the second obstacle is financing. I mean, mm -hmm. money. I mean, you have to have the money to do this, um, and it costs a lot more than than you just des you desire to tap to cost. Mm -hmm. um, but again, in the end, when you look over time, you know, uh, fifty years from now, this will be a very cheap building because it will still be very functional and very few things will have to have been replaced. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and even if 
I was just thinking, like we just replaced all of our windows, and I was just thinking, even if you replace the windows, the orientation is correct. You know, it's it's well thought out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So so we invested up front, and so that was is always an obstacle. It is with solar. You know, it's always an obstacle to to have to invest more up front. Yeah. To save down the line, and that. But, but I truly, truly believe, twenty five years from now, this will be the most cost-effective building that you could have ever built. Yeah, yeah. What, what would you say is the, you know, the vineyard and the winery, like the biggest success that, uh, you know, the thing that you feel the best about that, you know, just, oh, this really worked. About uh, the, the building? The, yeah, let's focus on the building. All the way from the thought process, you know, it's like when you first said, oh, this needs to be a, you know, a self, we'll use that word, sufficient, uh, or a self-sufficient. Well, I, I think that uh, uh, from a building this size and from the capacity of what we'll be able to produce here, I think it will be, we can do it with uh, less labor, it, it'll take fewer people to 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 produce uh, because of our layout, because of the gravity flow, uh -huh. uh, because of, of architecturally put together. I, I I just think that it's it's efficient from a, a manpower usage uh -huh. standpoint, and uh, so I think you know, you know that's that's just that's me. Um, but, you know, quite frankly, I think it's, it's the materials that we use. I mean, I'm really pleased that we use the corrugated metal. On the uh, I'm just, yeah, I, just think, I just think this fits the property. Uh -huh. I mean, that's probably the number one thing is this building truly does fit. It's not on the hill. It's not on the property. It's of the property, as Frank Lloyd Wright would have said. Um, it just blends in. It fits. That's the real, that's the real pleasure, I think. That, uh -huh. uh, that I could never, we could never have built a better um, barn, uh, light building. That uh, we could have built something else that wouldn't have been the same. Yeah. yeah. So we didn't build a, a shrine, and we didn't build a, something that sore thumb uh -huh. or whatever. Yeah. Frank Geary is, is going to, his firm has built, or has designed a winery in, in uh, Napa now. I don't know if you saw that. But, you know, I mean, it's show. And that, we, we Napa is Disneyland now. And we didn't want to build a show. Yeah. You know, we wanted to build something that the wines could be made. You know, maybe that, that's the other thing, is, is we think that this building and this construction of the site, of what, what we did inside the high tech is, is making better wine. And, and that's the ultimate, is the quality of wine at this building. And so you're saying that it actually, you know, like... We think it's increasing, it's increasing the quality of what we can produce is how we built this building. Hmm. I have to ask this, like, how, how does that work? It's like, I'm, I'm not... Well, when well, I said high tech, uh -huh. I said... What you mean by high tech is our fermentation tanks have a double uh, uh, controlled uh, heating and cooling system on each ferment. Uh -huh. So we can we can put a lower temperature or a higher temperature on the ha bottom half of. The oh, so it's not just one. Uh, no, it's not. Mm -hmm. it, so we can control how the the wine is fermenting much more so. Hmm. Um, I think the the, uh, the gravity flow helps uh, treat the wine more gently. Uh, even though pumps are very acceptable to use because they're very gentle, um, I think then uh, taking the gravity and putting it, the, the wine into the uh, barrels is is um, is a, a real quality plus as well. Having even temperatures in the cellar, naturally even temperatures, I think that helps. Yeah. Um, 
But, you know, that's just what the building will provide you. The winemaker still has to make sure that they, you know, select the right yeast and they, they, they run at the right temperatures and they, they don't let too much air or too little air get into the wine. Um, but we have, we have most of that under our control. Mm -hmm. And so that's, so, so I think, it, I truly believe it increases the quality of 